you made yourself so humble that you came on this earth like a man and lived a life like us, but totally sinless. Thank you, God, for this. sisters uh, it's a joy to be with all of you uh, i just uh, you know to start with you know in the in the word of god we see you know so many you know good examples at the same time there are some bad examples also the word of god shows as a warning for all of us and uh, you know that is very important actually when the word of god shows especially i was going through uh, some of the bad examples it is repeatedly mentioned in the new testament you know as a warning and uh, this is you know for us that you know we will take we will we will we will take these warnings very seriously and we will apply these truths in our life so i just wanted to uh, share about uh, these uh, two uh, three examples that the word of god shows actually from uh, whom we can take uh, warnings uh, before that, when we turn to Jude, I would like to read uh, Jude verse uh, verse 3 and 4. Jude verse 3 and 4, I will read from uh, the Living Bible. Uh, Dearly loved friends, I had been planning to write you some thoughts about the salvation God has given us, but now I find 
I must write of something else instead, urging you to stoutly defend the truth that God gave once for all to his people to keep without change through the years. See, uh, here uh, the reason Jude is writing here is, you know, to challenge all of us. The Holy Spirit wants to challenge all of us that we will hold on to the truth without compromise. We will hold on to the faith that we have received without compromise. And then in verse 4, it says in the Living Bible Translation that I say this because some godless teachers have wormed their way in among you saying that after we become Christians, we can do just as we like without fear of God's punishment. The fate of such people was written long ago for they have turned against our only master and Lord Jesus Christ. So this is a, this is a clear warning that, uh, you know, Jude gives, uh, you know, the word of God gives to all of us that, you know, few people saying that after we become Christians, we can do just as we like without fear of God's punishment or, you know, portraying a picture that, you know, our father is a loving father. He is a very loving father. You do, you know, sin and, you know, the blood of Jesus is there, you know, and again, you can go and you can sin and the blood of Jesus is there. But uh, that is not how, uh, you know, God wants all of us to live, but, you know, with responsibility that, you know, Jesus Christ, he paid a big price for us. He paid a big price for us and he has bought all of us. He paid a big price and he has bought all of us and how we need to live. We need to live. Uh, with great uh, responsibility and uh, you know uh, I just wanted to uh, you know mention this because uh, you know I was living in this deception for so many years so many years that you know once saved you know we are saved for eternity we are saved for eternity once saved you are saved for eternity and you know uh, a casual approach towards the Christian life I, I personally had this a casual a very casual approach towards Christian life and there is no reverential fear in the heart but in the year 2009 after God you know really uh, you know brought conviction in my heart I surrendered my life I truly became born again I told Lord I want to live for you that doesn't mean that you know uh, all of a sudden I became perfect but we are all pressing on to perfection but one thing that God gave light at that time is to uh, take the word of God uh, you know seriously and uh, uh, you know to uh, to be very honest before God to be very honest, the first uh, character, we can turn to uh, Genesis chapter 4. We uh, read there about uh, Cain. Genesis chapter 4, verse uh, 2 onwards. Now Abel kept flocks and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. And Abel also brought an offering, fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering, but on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry and his face was downcast. Okay, verse 6. Then the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. Uh, the problem here with Cain that we see, you know, Jesus, you know, what God is telling directly is that, you know, you are not, uh, you know, you are not doing things that are right and you need to change. You need to change. If you do the things that are right, I will accept you as well. I will accept you. So uh, the problem, the more, you know, the problem here with Cain was, you know, he was not living right before God. He was not right before God. And that's why, uh, you know, God is telling him that, you know, do the things that are right or, uh, you know, he was living, you know, without a reverential fear towards God or he was living in sin. And that's why God couldn't accept Cain and his offering. But Abel, it was not like that. Abel, we read in the word of God that, you know, he was, uh, he was righteous. Another uh, verse, you know, when we turn to 1 John, it is also mentioned over there, 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3 verse uh, 12. It is mentioned that do not be like Cain who belonged to the evil one 
and murdered his brother and why did he murder him because his own actions were evil and his brothers were righteous cain's actions were evil and his brothers actions were uh, righteous and that's why god didn't accept uh, cain and his offering now what really uh, you know bless me to understand here is you know the love of our god our almighty god even when you know he was following in his evil ways when cain was following in his evil ways and when his face was downcast when he was not accepted by god god is going and talking to cain directly he is telling him that you know uh, cain uh, you know why is your face downcast do things that are right turn away from your evil ways turn away from your wicked ways and then i will accept you so uh, there is one uh, thing that you know all of us uh, you know we can uh, take these words very seriously that when the holy spirit is uh, speaking to us when specifically in some particular matter you know god is speaking to us the holy spirit is speaking to us that uh, you know this is not right uh, you need to you need to stop that you need to stop doing that evil thing or Uh, you know this is not uh, you know pleasing to me when the holy spirit speaks to us you know there is a great love behind that you know our father there is a great love behind that and when the holy spirit speaks at that time you know what we need to do is we turn away from the wickedness we should not follow the example of uh, example of cain where he hardened his heart when god himself came to him and told him that you know warned him warned him that you know turn away from this evil ways do the things that are right but he hardened his heart and he was not willing to listen to god what god told him that was sin is crouching at your door and it desires to have you but you must rule over it you must overcome this is what sin's desire is it is at the door it is at the door and it wants to have you but you must overcome it but cain's response cain's response to that was you know he hardened his heart he did not have a reverential fear towards god but he just rejected that word of god he just rejected the word of god and he continued and he was very jealous he was jealous of his uh, brother he was jealous of his brother because he was accepted by god and he uh, his brother was accepted by god and he was not accepted by god and he couldn't stand his brother and you know he was full of jealousy that when he got an opportunity he killed him he killed him so this is actually a you know warning for all of us that you know when god speaks to us when the holy spirit speaks to us maybe uh, you know uh, you know it could be anything for all of us it could be anything in our daily life something very specific god says that you know you need to turn away from this wicked ways you need to turn away from this evil ways at that time we respond to god in faith and we say yes lord that was a opportunity for cain to turn away from his wicked ways that was an opportunity god is going to him and god is asking him that you know turn away from this then i will accept you turn away from this wickedness i will accept you that was an opportunity but he didn't uh, you know he hardened his heart i uh, you know especially in the you know area of uh, you know um, jealousy i could you know uh, i after i became a believer i you know i have seen actually i i thought actually that you know i have overcome jealousy but in a certain situation you know god exposed god exposed jealousy in my life god has exposed exposed so many things in my life especially in the area of jealousy and you know at that time i got really discouraged i really got discouraged i got discouraged and uh, you know that you know after hearing so many messages and after hearing you know uh, listening to so much of word of god uh, you know still i am having this uh, you know i am having jealousy i got very discouraged but then god really helped me to come out of that discouragement and to go in the presence of god with faith i i told my wife about that uh, and uh, you know then you know both of us we joined our hands and we prayed with faith and god over a period of time god delivered in that particular area not you know uh, step by step step by step god was helping actually to overcome in that area but uh, you know later on god gave grace actually to understand that uh, that you know there is no need to discourage it is god's love god will show you know daily it is out of god's love 
god will show if we are a real serious christians god will show one or the other areas that you know they, here uh, you know there is a there is a there is an area actually you know where you need to turn away from this way this is not correct this is not correct and at that time what we do is we take the word seriously we don't get discouraged uh, brothers and sisters i want to encourage all of you that when the holy spirit speaks to you when uh, you know uh, father in heaven when through the holy spirit when you know holy spirit speaks to you at that time don't get discouraged when you know some sin is exposed but you know thank you lord thank you so much for showing this area i want to repent i want to turn away from this cain hardened his heart he continued with jealousy and when he got an opportunity he he killed his brother so this is uh, something that we learn from uh, you know uh, you know as a warning from cain that we don't want to follow that when the holy spirit speaks to us we are very sensitive to that and we uh, we turn from our wicked ways another example uh, the next example that we see is about uh, balaam we can turn to numbers chapter 22 onwards uh, i don't want to go you know each and every word but some of the things i just wanted to uh, quickly uh, share about uh, you know balaam uh, chapter 22 verse 2 uh, onwards we read now uh, balak son of zippor so all that israel had done to the amorites they defeated them and they destroyed them and moab was terrified because there were so many people indeed Moab was filled with dread because of the Israelites. So uh, the Israelites defeated Amorites. Now they are living in the plain of Moab. When they were living in the plain of Moab and they were numerous in numbers, Balak, King Balak, he also saw actually that, you know, uh, the God is there with them. He was terrified. He was terrified because of uh, the uh, God's people. And then he is sending a messenger to Balaam and Balaam had a reputation in verse 6 towards the end we read this is a reputation that he had towards the end he tells about Balaam that for I know that whoever you bless is blessed and whoever you curse is cursed so this is something you know uh, you know Balaam as a uh, you know a prophet he had this reputation that you know whoever he curses they will be cursed Whoever he blesses, he will be blessed. And then these people, they are going to uh, meet Balaam and they are taking, you know, the fee for divination, some, you know, uh, money. And, uh, you know, then we see actually the attitude of Balaam, how, he, how it is changing, how the attitude of uh, Balaam is changing. You know, uh, a clear message is there that, you know, he has to curse the people of Israelites and then Balaam is telling you, please, in verse 8, spend the night here. Balaam said to them, and I will report back to you with the answer the Lord gives me. I want to consult with the Lord. He wants to consult with the Lord. And then later on in the verses, uh, we see actually that, you know, again, uh, you know, he's telling that, you know, I will, I will not be able to curse. And then, uh, then Balak is again uh, talking to him. And then in verse 18, but ba Balaam answered them, even if Balak gave me all the silver and gold in his palace i could not do anything great or small to go beyond the command of the lord my god now spend the night here so that i can find out what else the lord will tell me that night god came to balaam and said since these men have come to summon you go with them but do only what i tell you i was uh, you know as i was meditating here you know see balaam is telling something you know differently but god saw that his heart is totally different he is telling that, you know, even if Bala gave me all the silver and gold in his palace, all the silver and, go of, uh, silver and gold from the palace, I will not be able to do that. But God saw that his heart was different. Whatever he was telling is not right in his heart. You know, he had this great love of money. He had this love of money. And then, uh, you know, that's why God is telling him that, you know, you go with them. And in verse... Uh, 22 when he went with these people God was angry God was angry with Balaam verse 22 but God was very angry when he went and the angel of the Lord stood in the road to oppose him and I think all of us we know about this that how uh, Balaam was so much 
blinded he was so much you know blinded with his love of money he couldn't see the angel on the way but the donkey could see uh, the angel on the way the donkey could see but balaam uh, couldn't see and then uh, how god is changing you know uh, you know the curse into a blessing god is asking balaam that you know you have to bless them and every time every time balaam goes and blesses the people of israel every time and then uh, you know in verse 24 balak got very angry in verse 10 he says that then balak's anger burned against balaam he struck his hands together and said to him i summoned you to curse my enemies but you have blessed them these three times i i called you the reason the very reason that i called you was to curse these people the but in every time you bless but in verse 11 see this is what uh, something you know uh, uh, you know what we can really take take it as a warning in verse 11 now leave at once and go home i said i would reward you handsomely but the lord has kept you from being rewarded i wanted to honor you this is a uh, you know deception that can come you know from this world also when we are whole hearted for god and when we want to you know commit our lives to god Uh, i think all brothers and sisters you are all young when we decide that you know we want to you know commit ourselves to god be whole hearted christian you know we can be surrounded by this kind of temp- temptations that the world has to offer many things maybe it has to offer money it has to offer honor and it can sound like belak you know how he is telling it can sound like that that you know i wanted to honor you i wanted to honor you see verse 11 i would reward you handsomely but the lord has kept you from being rewarded i want to reward you handsomely i can make you rich but you are listening to your lord and he has kept you from being rewarded so uh, this is uh, you know something that we can uh, take in our hearts even jesus christ when we turn to matthew chapter 4 when jesus christ was uh, also Uh, tempted by satan matthew chapter 4 verse 8 again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor and then he told to jesus christ all this i will give you he said if you will bow down and worship me and jesus said to me him that away from me satan for it is written worship the lord your god and serve him only jesus christ was also tempted by satan uh, satan showed him just like you know belak is telling that you know i wanted to reward you handsomely i want to make you rich i want to wanted to reward you handsomely i want to give you all the honor but the lord is keeping you from getting rich from getting you know this handsome reward from getting this honor and now here satan is telling to jesus i will give you all these things i will give you if you if you will bow down and worship me he showed showed jesus christ the kingdoms of this world and their uh, splendor so uh, you know in our life also i was uh, you know judging myself you know maybe through friends maybe through our peers maybe uh, through our uh, maybe relatives you know this kind of pressure can come that you know why don't you do this why don't you do this you know why don't you you know uh, do something else to get more money to be more rich to become more famous to gain honor this kind of temptation we can be you know we can be surrounded with or uh, you know those who are working you know a little bit of compromise just a little bit of compromise and you can be rich but at that time we have to understand one thing that we are we are supposed to serve god we need to take a stand and we need to depend on god and we need to uh, we need to uh, tell god lord uh, you know please lord please save me from this kind of temptations i don't want to fall into uh, this kind of traps the temptation is strong the temptation is very strong but lord please help me give me your grace lord i want to overcome i have decided that i want to follow you lord i want to i want to live for you but lord please give me your grace and god is always there uh, on our side to help us we also read about uh, the uh, love of money in uh, 1 timothy chapter 
verse 10 for the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs very clearly the word of god tells here the love of money and we can judge ourselves that you know you know uh, you know do we do we have this love of money and if god shows some particular area i i tell this uh, sometimes you know when we you know uh, while driving on the road while driving on the road you know sometimes all of a sudden you know <laughs> the uh, camera flashes camera flashes and uh, you know so it is very clear that you know there is a fine that is coming behind that and i have to pay that and you know when this camera flashes immediately you know some little bit of unrest is there in the heart you know a little bit of joy is gone i'm telling about myself and you know in these times actually god have showed actually that you know somewhere somewhere there is love of money otherwise your joy should not go you know why why all of a sudden you know you are joyful and you know we are you know singing and you know so much joyful and all of a sudden when a fine comes and you know a little bit of joy is reduced and that is the time that we can go to god and honestly tell to god lord yes there is love of money please save me save me from this lord please save me i want to i want to overcome in this area lord and by your grace by your help i will be able to maybe it is something else uh, not money maybe it is something else honor i uh, you know i have uh, uh, i have experienced this uh, you know that you know few years back that uh, you know i had been working with this company for a very long uh, you know i think uh, more than uh, you know 15 years and so my uh, peers, they used to tell me and they all, you know, grow because they all change the companies, you know, very frequently and they grow. And then, you know, sometimes they, uh, you know, call and they say that, you know, uh, what is your plan? What is your plan? You're not going to grow like this. Look at us. You know, we, you know, if you don't change the companies, switch the companies, then you will not progress. You will not grow. And, you know, when this kind of, uh, you know, uh, things, when you hear at that time, you know, this is actually a temptation. I have seen that you know it is a temptation and then you know you start thinking that you know are you doing something wrong then you start yeah actually that's right what you told is also right we start thinking on that line and but then when you surrender your life to god you understand that you know god wants you to be here god's desire is that you know you be in the center of the will of god if god's desire is to be here god will you know, God will take care of you, your family, everything God will take care. Everything, you know, God will take care. And if God wants you to move to another, uh, you know, uh, company, another firm, that, that God will take care. Only thing what we need to do, that is Matthew chapter 6. This also had tremendously blessed me in my life. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. Seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. This is what our uh, calling is that you know we seek the kingdom of god and his righteousness in all the areas we say lord i want to glorify your name lord whatever light you have given if it is a you know a, a little bit of light that you you have given me lord i want to be faithful in that area i want to seek your kingdom and your righteousness i want to live for your glory and lord it is your promise that all the other things that you will take care you will take care about my family, your my you know my needs, my children's needs, everything, Lord. You will take care. I want to follow you wholeheartedly. And uh, the last example about uh, Cora, I want to uh, you know uh, close with uh, Cora, Numbers chapter sixteen, Numbers chapter sixteen, verse verse three. Uh, we know that uh, Cora is a Levite and uh, you know they all uh, came out from the slavery of uh, egypt and korah is a levite and then in verse 3 it is mentioned that they came as a group to oppose moses and aaron and said to them you have gone too far the whole community is holy every one of them and the lord is with them why then do you set yourselves above the lord's assembly and immediately in verse 4 when moses heard this he fell face down moses was a uh, uh, moses was a very very uh, humble uh, leader uh, was very humble and they are bringing in this accusation to him that you know he is setting himself above you know everyone above the lord's assembly what is the difference between us and there is a you know great uh, you know jealousy with uh, you know korah 
and that is where you know he is rebelling he is rebelling and together with him it is dadan and abairam also joined with him and they rebelled and when they rebelled when moses heard this he fell face down there we see you know a big you know contrast one person is very proud and rebellious and on the other side you know moses is so humble that he just fell face down he consulted uh, god and then in verse uh, verse uh, 23 numbers chapter 16 verse 23 then the lord said to moses say to the assembly move away from the tents of korah dadan and abairam god is going to bring judgment over there because of this rebellion because they rebelled you know god is going to bring a judgment and in verse 31 same chapter 16 verse 31 32 33 we read as soon as he finished saying all this the ground under them split apart and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them and their households and all those associated with korah together with their possessions they went down alive into the realm of the dead with everything they owned the earth closed over them and they perished and were gone from the community this was the uh, judgment this was the uh, this was the judgment that came this was the judgment that came upon kora because of his uh, because of his uh, rebellion and uh, in uh, you know even in the in the area of uh, you know uh, rebelling against the authority i don't think you know any one of us we will uh you know rebel against the authority openly and you know we will you know uh, fight against them but you know the rebellion can start in our heart it can it can start in our heart maybe uh, you know at the workplace with our manager you know something something uh, you know a small incident happened or we requested something and he did not accept or you know maybe in front of others he told corrected us or something like that and some you know some incident it has happened and then in our heart we can have a rebellion against our authority uh, maybe uh, you know anywhere you know anywhere wherever god has kept us you know you know there are authority and this rebellious attitude i have judged myself in that area also like you know it can happen maybe uh, you know it is very easy to also submit to an authority who is very capable but when you know sometimes the authority is not capable also it is very difficult to you know submit but then we have a, a a great example in jesus christ even though he was god even though he was god you know he submitted he submitted to imperfect joseph imperfect mary that is a great example for all of us so even in uh, you know in that particular area when uh, the holy spirit exposes and shows that you know there is a you know rebellion attitude in your heart it is very serious it is very serious and what we need to do is we need to go in the presence of god and honestly acknowledge that you know yes lord i have i have this uh, you know this wickedness in my heart lord please save me please save me from this whenever the holy spirit shows maybe it is a you know it is uh, if it is a you know jealousy like cain or it is uh, you know uh, it is a rebellious attitude or it is love of money or it can be anything whenever the holy spirit shows us what we can do is we honestly go in the presence of god and we say yes lord yes lord i i accept it i don't want to uh, you know you know disregard what you are telling or uh, you know maybe in the church some brothers can also uh, you know uh, correct us and they can show us Uh, that you know this is uh, you know this is not correct at that time at that time what we need to do is honestly we accept we go in the presence of god and we say lord thank you so much for showing that area i want to repent i want to turn from that i want to turn from that lord it is for my good that you are exposing these things and i want to turn away from that uh, one one more thing i just wanted to share here was when we turn to uh, numbers chapter 26 verse 11 we see here that when uh, kora when kora and um, dadan abairam they were all uh, you know swallowed by the earth at that time it is mentioned in uh, numbers chapter 26 verse 11 that the line of kora however did not die out 
See, that is again a good example that we see. The sons of Korah, the moment you know, uh, you know, the Lord told, and then Moses conveyed it that you know, move away from the tents of Korah, Dadan, and Abiram. The sons of Korah they took a stand. What they did was, they 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 didn't want to partner with their father, you know, with this rebellious attitude. What they did was, they went away from the tents of you know Korah. You know, they went away from their father, and because of that, you know, the the judgment didn't come upon them. So this is also uh, you know a good thing that we learn from here that. Uh, you know, maybe, you know, in our office, people are talking against the authorities. Move away from them. Move away from them. Otherwise, maybe we can carry that kind of spirit. Maybe it can be in the church or home or, you know, anywhere, anywhere, wherever God have kept us. If we see that, you know, the others are having a spirit of rebellion, it is always good that, you know, we move away from them. Otherwise, we can also, if we, if we uh, you know, associate with them more, we can also carry this uh, spirit of uh, rebellion. We can carry the spirit of rebellion. So uh, God will help us definitely to take these words and to apply it in our life. One last verse I would like to share from Hebrews chapter 4 verse uh, 15 and 16. Uh, this has been a great blessing for me and uh, I hope it is a blessing for all of you also that for we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses but we have one who has been tempted in every way just as we are yet he did not sin uh, dear brothers and sisters uh, i think in the previous meetings also i shared uh, this verse it has been a great great encouragement for me a great comfort that we have a high priest lord jesus christ who is able to empathize with us is able to empathize with us when we uh, you know, we need not fall, but when we slip up in some area, at that time we need not be discouraged and, you know, go away from God, but we have Jesus Christ. We will not use it as a license to sin, but we can run in the presence of God. We can go in the presence of Jesus Christ and, and, and say immediately, Lord, I'm so sorry I fell in this area. I need your grace in the next time. The reason is because he was also tempted in every way, exactly like us. He was tempted like us in every way but he did not sin that gives us so much of hope that jesus christ was also tempted like us in every way but he overcame he did not sin this gives us so much of hope that you know lord how did you overcome in the same way please help me also to overcome and then it, it says in verse 16 let us then approach god's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need how should we approach uh, God? How should we approach God? It is mentioned there that we should approach God with great confidence. With great confidence, we need to, uh, you know, run in His presence with great confidence, so that he may, we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. May God help all of us with this word. May His name be glorified. In Matthew chapter four, uh, brother shared from this chapter about Jesus. Uh, uh, in this verses, just uh, I saw just two things here in uh, in verse eight. Uh, the devil took him uh, to a very high mountain, and in verse eleven, uh, the de the devil left him. So in verse eight it says the devil took him. In verse eleven, the devil left him. So it's just uh, I looked about this. Uh, saw, saw these verses. The devil took him and the devil, devil left him. But in, in between these verses, uh, that is, there is the word of God. Jesus said to him, go away, Satan, for it is written, you are to worship the Lord your God and serve only him. So what I learned is, uh, you know, devil can took us in our thought life uh, to rebel against God and to rebel against authority. Uh, but uh, if the devil have to left us, we need in between we need to fight with him with the, the with the sword of the spirit the word of god so whenever uh, satan come to us and took us uh, in our thoughts uh, mm, rebel against that uh, against your manager or rebel against your uh, parents or with your wife against your wife or uh, any authority but we should uh, 
speak a word of god to satan no i have to be humble i have to submit to the authorities you know in romans in the, in the book of romans it says uh, uh, god appointed the authorities so i have to submit to them so it's good for me the god allowed for me to make me more like christ so then the devil will lift us so in every case in every temptation uh, devil took us in our thought in, in our mainly in our thought life but uh, the devil has to lift us when when we quote the word of god when we have the word of god we can uh, uh, have battle with him we can win over uh, we can win that battle by using the word of god that's it well. uh brother i was just uh, yesterday i was going through a scripture uh so it says uh, in matthew 6 i think this might be familiar to everybody but uh, it, it just refreshed uh, me yesterday while sharing it with someone so i i was in, i was just reading this uh, verse saying therefore i tell you do not be anxious about your life for uh, sorry what you will eat or what you will drink nor about your body nor about what you will put on so this verse if you see there is a therefore and when there is a therefore there is a continuation of the previous verse which says in 24 it says no one can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other you cannot serve both god and money so here i feel uh, the the anxiety which we have can result us to many sins and might result us to a desire other some something other than god and this anxiety tells us uh, like how uh, balam also asked uh, once more he went because of the money this anxiety which we have will make us depend on something other than god uh, because if he is the omniscient person we we must be in full faith that he will be the one to take care of us and uh, that is what god spoke to me brother and and being ang- do not be anxious is told three times in that verse and uh, we don't see this verse as a encouragement for a weaker people but an exhortation for us sinners thank you brother so just okay. a feedback so oh, this message was blessing for me so what i liked is uh, he connected it to a present situation so one of the, the pressure of the society uh, making us to run an another race another race that you should buy this you should buy you should be like this so that is one thing which which touched me and second is is um, the switching a jobs just to make more money so that I, i really faced recently actually and second is the rebellion against the company is the company i am faced i am facing recently so it was a, a encouragement encourage message for me thank you so what i want to say is not much i just caught that uh, sentence when the speaker said can you hear me clearly yes yes Okay so uh the speaker said that God did not answer uh uh Balaam by the words of his mouth because the words of his mouth sound spiritual but God answered him according to the content of his heart you know sometimes when we pray we have this uh, uh spiritual language with which we communicate to God but then our the content of our heart is totally different And so God doesn't uh, deal with people according to what is in their mouth but what is in the content of their heart. And maybe that is why many times our prayer are not answered or we don't even hear God concerning whatever is within us. So it was uh, a very uh, important message for me because lately I have been uh, uh, waiting on God for something and it appears as if uh, I'm not hearing God clearly. So I think it's about the content of our heart go we really respond to not what we are saying in our mouth. 